Hi, Wayne Bryan here, and welcome to another episode of Flashback Fridays, where we look at one of our past productions. This one happens to be an exciting historical drama called Newsies, but it also has some particular history for music theater Wichita that I thought was worth sharing today. It included in its cast a wonderful guy named Hal Davis, whom we loved working with and whose own career traced the history of Music Theater Wichita. Hal passed away this last Easter Sunday, but he will not be forgotten by us and he will live on as part of our legacy. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about him as we get ready to look at a little bit of Newsies. In 1972, Music Theater of Wichita was formed so that the new Century 2 could have something reliable happening in the concert hall every summer. And Hal was a student at Wichita State University at that moment in time. The first season of Music Theater of Wichita had three concert attractions and only one musical play and that was Man of La Mancha. And for Man of La Mancha, they imported the whole production over from Wichita State University. Hal played Dr. Carrasco. So he was one of our first leading men ever in the first actual musical done at Music Theater of Wichita. I didn't know any of this at the time. I was living and working in New York. Well, in 1983, thanks to mutual friends, I met Hal Davis and I cast him as young Joe Hardy in Damn Yankees at Cortland Rep Theater. So I got to work with him there and he was marvelous. Yes, a man doesn't know what he has till it is no longer around. But the happy thought is, whatever it is, he's lost. May someday In that production, the musical director was Craig Barna, the choreographer was Mark Madama, and the leading lady was Robin Taylor. That was 1983. Well, in 1988, I got invited to run Music Theater of Wichita, and the first show of that season was Camelot. So I invited my New York friend, Hal Davis, to come play King Arthur not realizing he was from Wichita, Kansas, and had a long history here. It was great to start my first season as a producer with somebody like Hal as the leading man. As the years went on, Mark Madama, Craig Barna, and Robin Taylor would also work here as well. So Hal was a marvelous King Arthur. And you walk by what the king is wishing tonight. He's wishing he were in Scotland fishing tonight. What occupies his time? Years later we did the show Big River and that also needs a king but in this case a fake one a shyster and Hal Davis was marvelous as the shyster king in Big River well anybody wondering what they're gonna see he's gonna have to any up a dollar for the ticket and anybody wondering what's going on he's gonna find out when the chase is through the thicket when the darkness falls on the town and the north stars start to rise you can't imagine the menagerie created by a couple of guys. For our 25th anniversary season, we did two great shows, Guys and Dolls and Crazy for You. And Hal was in both of them, and he couldn't have been more different. In Guys and Dolls, he was that rascally gambler, Sky Masterson. A lady doesn't leave her escort. It isn't fair. It isn't nice. A lady wouldn't wander all over the room and blow on some other guy's dice. So let's keep the party polite. Never get out of my sight. Stick with me, baby. I'm the fella you came in with. Luck be a lady. Luck be a lady. Luck be a lady tonight. And that same season, 
in Crazy For You, he was the Broadway impresario Bella Zangler, who in this case finds himself being imitated by another character played by Jim Walton. This scene with the two of them was priceless. She doesn't want me. And in our new version of Good News, Hal played Coach Johnson. Here he is in the 2003 production of that show, and he also recorded the role on the cast album in 1995. One smile from you always brightened my day. Now that's very nice. I'm not much with words. I'm not much of an athlete. I've been thinking a lot about our time together. Really? I'm not a poet. Ah, oh, well, I know it. I've never been a raver. But when I look at you, I rave a bit. It's true. You're the cream in my coffee. You're the salt in my stew. You will always be my necessity. I'd be lost without you. After that, Hal became a teacher for 10 years on the East Coast. And when he finally came back to Wichita, we were happy to have him playing Joseph Pulitzer, the villain in Newsies. Give me a week and I'll train them to be like an army that's marching to war. Proud of themselves and so grateful to me, they'll be begging to pay even more. When there's dirt on your shoes, boys, for God's sakes, relax. Why throw them out? All we need is some drugs. Listen well to these barber shop lessons, for they'll see you through. Just last season, when Music Theater Wichita teamed up with the Wichita Symphony Orchestra for a production of South Pacific in concert, we invited Hal to come play Captain Brackett, and he got every laugh that you could get with that role. Might find that hard to believe, sir. They tell me this man is 44 years old. <laughs> Cable. It is a common mistake for boys of your age and athletic ability to underestimate men who have reached their maturity. Oh, uh, sir, I, I didn't mean... Younger <clears throat> women frequently find a grown man attractive. Strange as that may seem to you, I myself am over 50. I'm a bachelor. And Cable, I do not by any means consider myself through. <laughs> What's the matter, Bill? Nothing, evidently. Hal was a wonderful, generous man, really important to the theater history of Wichita, certainly important to the history of music theater of Wichita, and we are going to miss him terribly. But now, let's talk about our show that's being featured today, Newsies. It's based on an historic incident that happened in 1899. At that time, William Randolph Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer were the biggest publishers of newspapers, and the papers were sold on the street by kids who would buy them in the morning at a fixed price for them and then sell them to the customers at the regular street price. About 10% of the newsies were girls, but mostly they were boys, and they would sell them on the street, and whatever they made, that was their profit. And at the end of the day, if any papers they didn't sell would not be bought back by the publishers. So these kids had to invest wisely in order to make their slim margin of profit. Well, after the Spanish-American War, newspaper circulation dropped a bit. 
and Pulitzer and Hearst wanted to keep their profit margin high, but they didn't want to pass the price on to the customers. So they started charging the newsies an extra cent per paper. Well, this really cut into that profit margin, and these kids organized. It's a fascinating story, and there were no adults really helping them. They banded together and figured out how to put the pressure on Pulitzer. They organized in the streets. They sang songs. They even blocked the Brooklyn Bridge. Finally, Pulitzer had to come around and make a compromise. It's a fascinating story, and it's amazing that it had never been dramatized until a pair of screenwriters, Bob Zudiker, and Noni White took the idea of this story to the Disney company, suggesting they make a live action drama out of this story. It seemed the kind of material that the Disney company would like. Well, right then in the late 1980s, the Disney company had had a huge success with The Little Mermaid and then another one with Beauty and the Beast. And so despite the fact that movie musicals had been flopping like crazy all through the 80s, Disney Company decided they would make the story Newsies, but they would make it as a musical with an Alan Menken score. So this came out in 1992 and uh, flopped amazingly. It just tanked completely at the box office. Uh, its young leading man was quite flummoxed by the whole thing. A British actor, teenager named Christian Bale was hired to play Jack Kelly. And then they turned it into a musical, and he informed them he had never sung or danced. Well, actually, he does quite well in the movie. Uh, he's athletic, and they managed to make it look quite right. And his singing is fine. But anyway, the movie is a sort of odd mix of 1899 and 1980s mentality. So it made no money at the box office, and it set movie musicals back a little ways. However, VHS copies of that movie kept being passed on from generation to generation of teenage girls who liked seeing all those boys dancing. And then after a while, school productions of Newsies started, even though there was no script and score for it. They would take the songs and they would write dialogue out from the movie, and all of these unauthorized productions were going on. The Disney company kept getting calls, won't you please do a stage version of Newsies, at least for schools. So the Disney company finally relented and said, okay, we'll do a production of it at some regional theater and we will license this show just to regional theaters. We're not bringing it to Broadway, but nevertheless, they hired a really great team. Alan Menken, who had done the songs in the movie, agreed to do the additional songs for the stage play. And Jack Feldman, who had done the movie lyrics, came on board as well. And they got the multi-Tony Award-winning Harvey Firestein to write the script. And they got the beautiful Paper Mill Playhouse in Milburn, New Jersey, to host the first production of it. I went to see it there because this was a show that supposedly was going to come right to regional theaters like ours. I saw it. It was terrific. The New York Times saw it. They agreed. It was terrific. Suddenly, Disney had the biggest hit of the year, and they weren't even planning to take it to Broadway. After a sold-out run at the Paper Mill, which was extended... They took it back for a few minor rewrites and a little bit of recasting, and then they took it to New York for what was supposed to be a limited run engagement. It starred Jeremy Jordan, and it was really, really wonderfully staged. Very exciting show to watch. And uh, it ran for more than a thousand performances. Finally, it came around to the regional theaters like ours, and the Disney company picked eight theaters in 2017 who would get to do the premiere in this country. Uh, I directed it. As I mentioned before, Brian J. Markham did really wonderful choreography. The lead actor, Jack Kelly, was played by uh, Trevor McChristian, a former Jester Award winner, who is now having a nice regional theater career. He just did West Side Story in Kentucky, and we saw him in An American in Paris in Chicago. And Trevor Michael Schmidt plays Crutchy, I urge you to go to his Facebook page and look at all of the dance numbers he's recreating. He'll take a request, he'll look at a classic number from a film, and then reproduce it, and you see them side by side. It's amazing. So anyway, here are some clips from Newsies. It has a lot of athleticism, and one of the things we got to do with our production was to bring it back to the age level that the story actually included. That is, 
on Broadway, naturally, they didn't want to hire a lot of children, although children were the primary news sellers in 1899. Because we can work with our whole community, uh, we can include our professional actors, our uh, teens, and our kids, and Brian Markham really did a wonderful job of including everybody in the really big numbers. I think we had about 78 people on stage, I'm not sure. Bruce Brockman did a beautiful set, and uh, Dixon Reynolds did terrific costumes. So I hope you'll enjoy these clips from Newsies and join us next week for another Flashback Friday. And then on May 3rd, make sure you join us for the Jester Awards here online. See you soon. of clean air and you could toss that crutch for good. Santa Play, you can bet we won't let them bastards beat us. We won't beg no one to treat us fair and square. There's a life that's worth the living and I'm gonna do my share. Work the land, chase the Swim the whole Rio Grande just for fun. Watch me stand. Watch me run. too short to waste it on you it may be rough but soon enough i'll learn to make do the max and the oil well the diamonds a yacht with andy eduardo the pontiff and scott and frank oh and my bank so spill no tears for me because there's one thing you